See, they were very, very zealous. They'll cross land, they'll cross the sea, they will use any means to bring their error and their falsehood unto the people. They zealously affect you, but not well. It's not for your good. They will cut you away from the Savior. They will cut you away from the sanctifier. They will cut you away from the power that you need in your life. They will cut you away from concentrating on the way that leads to heaven. And it will be like, you know, they take the precious thing, the gift and the grace and the goodness of God away from your hand. And yet they do it lovingly lovingly if they, if somebody loves you and is going to take salvation from you it's going to take holiness from you he loves you always interacting with you he wants to bring you down from the top where you are when you identified with christ and you're seated in heavenly places with christ he wants you to bring he wants to bring you to the low level of the law of moses and yet he's doing it zealously aff affectionately with smile with laughter and with good attitude but that's not for your good we need to understand uh, the difference between Paul the apostle and all those deceivers that were going to throw them down from the tower where they were they zealously affect you but not well yea they will exclude you they will exclude you with their smile. They exclude you from the salvation coming from Calvary with their smile and with their affection. They'll exclude you from the sin that Christ has purchased for us on the cross of Calvary with their smile, with their affection. They will exclude you from heaven. That's the important thing to consider. They will exclude you that ye might affect them. All they want is for you to please them them for you to make them happy at the expense of your losing heaven make them happy at the expense of your being caught away from Christ look at verse 18 in verse 18 but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing if you're going to affect anyone make it for their good what have I contributed to their lives? How have I lifted them up? How have I lifted them up? What zeal have I given them? What commitment have I given them? If you're going to be friends with anyone, you must ask yourself, what's she adding to my life? What's she adding to my life? How is she helping me? How is she making me to come nearer and nearer and nearer to Christ? It is good to be zealously affected, always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. Uh, let us look at uh, Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 2. Romans chapter 10, we're looking at verse 2, for I bear them record that they have the zeal of God but not according to knowledge. They have a zeal of God for the law, for Moses, for circumcision, for self-righteousness, for rituals, for animal sacrifice. They have a great zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. The Christ had died. Did he factor the death of Christ to their zeal? Christ has provided salvation. They didn't factor the, the, the provision of Christ's salvation into their religion. They're still zealous, as zealous as in Leviticus, as zealous as in Deuteronomy, but they overlook Calvary and they overlook salvation, and they overlook the Savior, and they overlook what God himself has said. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him, and any soul that will not hear him will be cut off from the people. That was their problem. The Lord does not want us to have zeal without knowledge, zeal without truth, 
Zeal without the gospel, zeal without salvation, zeal without the provision of Christ from Calvary. And I pray our zeal will go along with the word of God in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, traveling ambassadors refocused on awakening to his grace. We're coming to Galatians chapter 4 verse 19. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. What does that mean? It's giving us a picture of Christ standing at the door of their heart and knocking. That if anyone opens the door, I will come in unto him. I will dwell there. I will abide there. I will sup with him and fellowship with him. Now, he's using the picture that Christ was on the inside of them. But Christ had become powerless, impotent, like baby Christ. And it's not like a transforming Christ, a teaching Christ, an effective Christ, a mighty Christ, a powerful Christ inside them. And he says, now I travail. Now I persuade. Now I call you. Now I pray until Christ becomes fully formed in you mighty in you, powerful in you, that Christ will be what he is now with all his qualities and attributes and he will live big in you once again, the Christ of truth, the Christ of knowledge, the Christ of power, the Christ of revelation, the Christ of vision, the Christ of mighty enablement. I'm praying and traveling until Christ be fully formed in you now. Three things we're looking at. Number one, traveling until followers be fully persuaded. Number two, teaching until faith be firmly perfected. Number three, toiling until the faithful be finally preserved. Look at number one. Number one, traveling until the followers be fully persuaded so that they are no more up and down, in and out, sound and unsound, knowledgeable and ignorant. He wanted them to come to a level they're fully persuaded and nothing will change them again when galatians chapter 4 verse 19 my little children of whom i travail in birth again until christ be formed in you and then in verse 20 it says i desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby the lie in which to deceive. Then in verse 15, it says, But speaking the truth in love, ye may grow up. That's what he wanted for the Galatians. That's what God wants for us, that ye may grow up in all things. In doctrine, grow up in doctrine. In deeds, grow up in deeds. In the demonstration of your understanding and your partaking of the gospel, grow up in all things. In love, in devotion to God, in consecration to God, grow up in all things. In the service of God, in reaching out further to the people beyond your culture that will grow up in all things, which is the hedge, 
even Christ will, will grow up. Every one of us, by the grace of God, in the knowledge of the Lord, will grow up in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, the grace of salvation, the grace of sanctification, the grace of for steadfastness. It is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We're coming to number two here. Number two here, teaching until our faith be firmly perfected. Teaching until our faith be firmly perfected. Hey, look at um, First Thessalonians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10. Night and day day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith that was the desire of paul the apostle that anywhere he went to any fellowship assembly congregation he went he wanted to see their face that he might perfect that which was lacking in their faith. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13 there, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 28. Colossians chapter 1, Verse 28, when we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That we may perfect, present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Verse 29, in verse 29, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his walking, which walketh in me mightily. I pray that it will walk also in you mightily in Jesus' name. Number three here, we're toiling until the faithful be finally preserved. Toiling and walking until the faithful be finally preserved. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 10, that she may approve things that are excellent, that she may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Amen. We don't know Christ will come. But every day and every moment, we so live our lives in the grace of God that we are sincere and without offense, offense towards God, offense toward man, when without offense till the day of Christ. In verse 11, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. I pray you stand firm, you stay committed, and you stay stable and steadfast until the very end in Jesus' name. If that's going to happen, Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, we're looking at verse 25. But that which ye have already, that which ye have already, Christ knows we have something already. The angels know we have something already. Paul the apostle knew that the Galatians had something already, but the Judaizers were trying to take that out of their hands. 
I have something. You have salvation, you have something. You have sanctification, you have something. You have the service of God in your hand, you have something. You have the love for God, you have something. Uh, that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Who is going to hold fast? Steadfast until the end. Where are you? Hold fast until he comes. And the grace of God abide in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. That good thing that we have, the salvation, the experience, the power, the glory, the godliness, the presence of God, every good thing we have, hold fast until it comes. Let's pray unto the Lord. Let's bless the name of God. Let's worship him for this church. For all the Lord has spoken to us. Let's make personal commitment to the Lord and tell the Lord by his grace we will be faithful to the end. Let's tell the Lord that as Paul the Apostle identified with Gentiles forsaking all about the Mosaic law so that they can be saved, so that they can be separated, so that they can be sanctified, so that they be preserved for God's glory on the Lord day and the Lord will fully identify with all the new converts that God is bringing into the church globally in every part. It takes personal commitment, sacrifice. It takes self-crucifixion, forgetting about yourself and looking at what God says. It takes total commitment to the word of God, to the things of God, to the salvation of sinners, pray and tell the Lord to deep, do that deep work in your heart. It is the deep that we speak to the deep. Tell the Lord to make you deeper, to make you higher in faith, in grace, to be able to tolerate, to be able to endure, to be able to persevere, to be able to patiently go after the believers, the ones that are just coming in, the newcomers, then the ones in the church that are not understanding, let's pray the Lord will help us to make full identific identification with them. You identify with Christ, you can identify with the believers also. All believers, the Lord will do it in you. He will do it in every one of us and make us to be more gracious and make us to be more committed and make us to be more understanding and make us to be more identifying. Pray. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray to the Lord that all we see in our mentor, in our leader, in our father, in the Lord, all we see in all the overseers put over us, all the worthy example in their being able to go through all the persecution, afflictions, misunderstanding, misrepresentation, mispresentation concerning, concerning them. Let's tell the Lord that by his grace, despite what the enemy may want to say, to try to say this, say that, by the grace of God, we remain by the grace of God fully identified with, 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 with our mentor, we remain by the grace of God committed 
as he is committed, looking forward, as he's looking forward, that the grace of God will keep every one of us. Let's pray. The Galatians believers, they didn't look at the affliction, the persecution. They didn't look at whatsoever the people of the world may be laughing at because they don't understand the gospel. These people didn't look at those things. They were looking at things that are of eternal value in the lives of the, of, of the mentors. Pray and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me, Lord, to be a true follower. Help me, Lord, to truly identify despite whatsoever the leaders are going through. What is being said here and there is not what people say that matter, but what God says. Let's pray. The beating, the persecution, the injury, the stoning, whatsoever. Let's tell the Lord, we laid our hands upon the plow. We cannot look back. Let's tell the Lord, we have made up our mind to go through. Let's tell the Lord, heaven is our goal by his grace. The Lord will see you through. Pray and talk to the Lord. And the Lord will make you more glorious in faith. And by the grace of God, like Father, like Son, the image of Christ reproducing him will be reproducing you, reproducing me in every one of us. Pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. God is a God of today. Jesus is, I am that I am. Let's tell the Lord, as we have accepted our leader in time past, as we had affection towards our leaders, in time past, as we had loyalty towards our leader, obedience towards our leader, commitment towards the way they are leading us, that as we did that, the same we continue in us. We are not going to look back. By the grace of God, we are moving forward. Our commitment will be deeper. Our consecration will be higher. Our looking up to the Lord will be higher. Let's pray. We not allow affection to dwindle. We not allow our love to dwindle. By His grace, we continue. Pray and talk to the Lord that the former affection that was in you, through the grace of God, that more grace we abound in you, more grace we abound in me. The affection we go higher. The love we go higher. Pray and talk to the Lord, and the Lord will do a deeper work. In your heart, in my heart, to have more affection, to have more love, to have more commitment, to have more intimacy, to have all that God wants us to have, to love God more, to love our leaders more, to get into more intimacy with God, get into more intimacy with those who are leading us. There will be no cover up. There will be no cover up. We will be open to them in all even if we have missed the way they will correct us, let the righteous smite me. It shall be an oil of an ointment of oil upon my head. Pray. Talk to the Lord. Our affection will not dwindle. It will not be the falling attitude of the graceful Galatians. God wants us to be more graceful, graceful, godly, more glorious in all we do. There will be no decline, there will be no dwindling, of our affection, of our love, of our commitment, our commitment to the global crusade. 
should be higher now than what it was when we started because now we understand better than we understood at that very time. The more we understand, the more we should love. Pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. The zeal of the unbeliever that is deceitful, the zeal of the unbeliever that is injurious, will not pour cold water on your zeal. Rather, it will spoil you up to love God more, to love the work more, to be more committed in all that is being done. The unbelievers are doing what they are doing deceitfully. They have a goal in mind. They are not going to succeed in your life. In Jesus' name, all the efforts will come to zero. It will not affect you. Pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's make personal commitments to prayer for the new converts, to follow up on the new converts, to making sacrifices for the new converts, traveling on their behalf for the new converts, and even for those who are in the church who do not understand that God will help us to be able to open their eyes of understanding. That everybody will fall in line. That my, myself and yourself will continue by the grace of God to move forward as the church is moving forward. You will not be at the back. Pray and talk to the Lord. Make that personal commitment. Commitment to rise up when the Spirit of God wakes you up in the night. To pray for them. Following them up doing all we should do, getting them baptized in water, discipling them, getting them committed unto the work of God, that they also will also be like us, pray and talk to the Lord. We continue teaching them until by the grace of God, they are perfected. Pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now let's thank God. He has fed us this evening. Let's thank God. This for our perfection. This for the perfection of the church. Let's make total commitment. Let's believe God. The forthcoming global crusade, we are going to have more converts. The, first, the forthcoming uh, global crusade, we are going to commit ourselves to prayer more for it. And by the grace of God, all of us, globally we attain, and by his grace, more should be done. Let's pray together now, thanking God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your grace you have deposited into our lives. The grace that made us to see our right. We saw as we should see, we saw the identification of our mentors, our leaders with us. And because of that, we also fully identify with them. Lord, I pray this identity, it will not become a thing of the past in Jesus' name. The affection will not become a thing of the past in Jesus' name. I commit to not be a thing of the past in Jesus' name. Lord, deep, dig a well of love, dig a well of affection, dig a well of commitment into our hearts to follow through in Jesus' name. We are the love is dwindling. Whereas it's now looking at ordinary things, Lord, we pray, remove our eyes from vanity. Remove our 
eyes from vanity. Glue our house, O Lord, to heaven. Glue our house, O Lord, to commitment, to evangelism, to follow up, to visitation, to loving the people of God, to being affectionate towards our leaders in Jesus' name. Make us encouragement to those who are leading us. And as that is done, Lord, we pray those also we are following up who see us as leaders, they will follow suit. So that by your grace, Lord, like father, like son, we all will walk into heaven on the last day in Jesus' name. Help every one of us, Lord, to run to the end. None of us will give up midway in Jesus' name. Anoint our eyes with understanding. Anoint our eyes with anoint our eyes with perception. Anoint our ears with understanding. Anoint our hearts with obedience to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this evening. We just want to appreciate you, Lord, for all you have done for us, for all you have taught us. Thank you, Lord, for our Father in the Lord. More of your grace upon his life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. A power shift. And everybody said, yeah. All over the world, the GCK spirit is moving in holiness and righteousness by the authority of Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Joel Trujillo from Cuba. I've known this man of God for many years. God has used him to make me who I am today in my nation, a minister of the gospel here in Cuba. I urge you to connect with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui for the next global crusade holding in Ikoru, Lagos, Nigeria. Something really grand is coming your way. Those who have experienced this gospel of authority always come out with a smile and a golden lifeline. For three bad years, I was suffering with the issue of blood. I have tried so many places. I've gone to so many hospitals. There were no solutions. Until a final bus stop. When Pastor Kumuye had a divine touch crusade. When a woman bleeds, it could be one of different things. It could be the normal monthly bleeding. And of course, it could be abnormal. Abnormal uterine bleeding is fairly common in women and could cause a lot of distress in them. One of the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding is fibroid. Fibroid, there is no known cause of fibroid and it could be distressing because a woman could feel a feeling of mass in the abdomen which it could be scary. Abnormal bleeding, prolonged abnormal bleeding, which could also be scary. On that crusade, I was crying. I was asking God, when will I give my testimony? I was asking God, when will I stop going about with patch up and down in my body? I was asking God so many questions. Why did he even create me? After our daddy ministration, he now said, anyone that has a problem, I wish you they lay our hand in where our problem is. I stood up and lay my hand on my stomach. I tell God, I don't want to go back with this problem again. I want here to be my final bus stop. Instantly, immediately, the blood dried up. Right from that very day till today, nothing like that again. 
I receive my healing. Today, I want everybody, the whole world, to help me thank God. I want everybody to celebrate this God with me. All I have to say is thank you. Lord. And now, there's just one direction to look. All of us, all over Lagos, in every district, in every local government, everywhere, where everybody, the direction everybody is going now is Ikorodio, that alpha location of July Global Crusade. We're excited. And our youths, our children, our men, our women, everyone, members of the church, we're going to do whatever it will take to bring the gospel from there and make it reach to all the nations of the world. Millions will hear, multitudes will turn to Christ in Jesus' name. Amen to this power shift. You've never seen anything like it before. Are you part of this? Are you keen into this? Is the fire burning inside you that now God is making you a fulfillment of the promise he had given to Abraham? July 28th to August 2, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours Sunday worship service. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference. Friday, July 29th, Monday and Tuesday, August 1 and 2, 2022. From 7 o'clock in the morning. That's 06. 600 hours GMT daily. And for the youth, campus, and young adults, here comes the Impact Academy. Saturday, July 30, 0600 hours GMT, packaged on a global scale. A total package by the Covena, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui, at the GCK July edition, live at Ikorudu, Lagos State, Nigeria, poised to reveal total emancipation by the authority of Jesus Christ. Join us. As the inspirational and international evangelist, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kui will be ministering along with Jeff Dio, a guest music minister. This comes to you from Ikorodu, Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, and will be broadcast to the world live via satellite, social media, radio, and television. The Global Crusade with Kui, GCK Authority, is almost here.